one of the most important things that I learned from MIA, and I guess this ends up being the theme of this interview, is confidence. Because in the beginning, if she didn't like something, I would sort of like cower and apologize a lot. And then I realized no professional wants to hear you apologize. They just want you to get on the stage, deliver the job, and make the person feel confident. You want to get on the stage and be like, MIA, I got you. All you got to do is sing. I got the beat. Don't worry. Like, we're good. The show's going to be good. I'm a professional. I, I got this. And I realize that when I'm leading and the two sound designers who I'm working with, if they're apologizing and telling me why they can't do something that's less valuable to me than for them to own it, walk on the stage, plug their laptop in, and be like, Kieran, don't worry. We got you. I love thinking about the mix between the human and electronic. And I feel like so much electronic music right now get, ends up being very disposable and people don't value it because it sounds like science. It is amazing that we can make and manipulate these different sounds, create beats, do things off time. There's a lot of amazing projects that are there and doing that. But I feel like, even personally, I kind of skip through those songs or get sick of them after a while because they don't have something emotional that I can latch into, that I crave. It's very sciency. When I make music, I want it to have my human voice. Maybe it's sampled or electronically modified, but you can tell it's a human soul. It has human pain. It has human joy. It has my uh, excitement in the moment to make that song. It has my love for that beat. That's what I want my music to have. And I want my electronics to enhance musical qualities of it, either make my voice pitch shifted or be able to um, put a cool sound on the instead of a snare drum, put something else. But fundamentally, the music has to have a story and it needs to have a human component. I think a lot about the very wonderful things that I learned from MBA and ironically my MBA, the main thing it helped was my music. And I'll explain the pressure of being in a classroom with 90 of some of the smartest people in the world where you have to come in prepared to talk about something that you're not comfortable speaking about and they cold call you and you have to just go for it that built me up in a way that I never would have thought going into the program beforehand. It gave me the confidence to trust my gut. It gave me the confidence to sing better. It gave me the confidence to formulate thoughts in my head and own my thoughts and not be afraid of them or apologize for them. It gave me the confidence to also recognize other people's thoughts and value them. So these skill sets usually are channeled towards a consulting job or a banking job because you are in high pressure situations and you need to command the office and make decisions for everyone. But imagine if you take those skill sets and you put it into music. I feel like my music career has already accelerated much faster in the past six months since graduating than it had in the years prior. Well, the first thing is what Gandhi always said, and my last name is Gandhi, so that quote is close to me, which is, you must be the change you want to see in the world. And we can all tell other women to go off and do it, but it's very difficult for people to go for something that they can't see or believe to be true. So my first step really is to make electronic music that is boundary pushing and edgy and that makes people feel good so that the next generation of women, people of color, queer people, traditionally marginalized people from the EDM community can see my work and be like, oh cool, like where's your background? You look like me. How did you do this? Did you take classes? Did you work with someone? The story becomes real. That's really what the best contribution I can make in this stage of my life right now is, is to do it.